once heard someone say, there's many genders in the world as there are stars in the sky. Isn't that beautiful? The idea that our gender is unique to who we are as individuals. But it's not that way now, is it? We have two boxes we can check, male or female. Have you ever wondered, hey, why is that? Last week, I got lunch with a new friend, and she asked me the pretty typical question of, what do you do? I'm always ready for this question, and I have an elevator speech prepared. It goes, I study the resilience of transgender people. I want to understand how they deal with discrimination and make the world a better place for them, because a better place for them is a better place for me. But that's when I get what I call the real question. It's the real question of, wait a minute, you're not trans. So why do you care so much about trans people? You know, it's not necessarily a negative question, and I'm always happy to answer the question, because it's an opportunity to create greater understanding about who trans people really are. But I have to admit, the question also makes me sad. It makes me sad because it's a question that seems so normal to those who ask it. It's a question that makes me sad because as if caring about the well-being and treatment of my trans brothers and sisters, that should be abnormal, and there must be a reason that I do it. I do it because I care about trans people, and because trans people are like all of us. We want to live life as we truly are and be our real selves, right? But society doesn't seem to want that, do we? How do I know? Trans people get stared at physically and verbally assaulted just for walking down the street in their own skin. When trans people go to the doctor to see health care, they often have to educate their own doctor on how to treat them. And trans people share that they're afraid to use public restrooms. Yes, I said afraid. Why? Because public restrooms are some of the most unsafe places for trans people. Now, if you're like me, the last time I felt afraid to use a public restroom, it was because it was super nasty and smelled and looked like it hadn't been cleaned in a million years. I never once felt afraid to use it because someone was judging whether I should be in there or not. And on top of it all, trans people are asked the most rude questions all the time, as in, oh, you're trans, so have you had the surgery yet? Or if it's a trans guy, oh, does that mean you have a penis? Again. If you're like me, my mom and dad taught me it's seriously bad manners to ask what's inside someone's pants, right? <laughs> All these negative experiences, they add up for trans people. In a recent survey, 41% of the trans participants said they had attempted suicide at least once in their life. If we are all trans in the room now, that's nearly half of us. And think about any identity group that you're in. That's nearly half of that group. So I actually have a real, real question for all of us. If society is so toxic for trans people, why aren't we all working harder to make this world a better place for them? I think I might know one of the reasons why. We don't know who trans people are. We don't know their histories. We don't know where they come from. And we don't learn about them in our families. You know, one of the first and most famous trans people was covered in the 1950s. Her name was Christine Jorgensen. She was a white trans woman. She famously was covered by the media. She ran to the Netherlands to get what's now called a gender affirmation surgery. But Christine's story, it taught us two things. One, that being trans is a white thing. And two, that being trans is a more recent thing, as if being trans was a trend or a fad. And both of those things, they just simply aren't true. The truth is that trans people, they've existed throughout time, culture, continent, and context for hundreds of years. The Mahu of Hawaii, the Mushe of Mexico, the Hijra of India and Pakistan, the trans peoples of the continents of Latin America and Africa. In many of these cultures, trans people were seen as sacred. They led ceremonies and rituals. Why? Because their lives were valued. They were considered important. 
So how did we get to this place where we lost trans histories and sacred stories? And P.S., how do we not think about how we transgress gender every day? Think about your own gender for a moment. Who told you you were a boy or a girl? Who taught you the unspoken rules about how to perform that gender? And what happened when you stepped out of that tiny gender box? You know, for the women in the room, we're taught what? We can't be thin enough, and we certainly can't be beautiful enough. Even the fashion models on the billboards report hating their bodies. And if we're in the workplace and we're too assertive or we stand up for ourselves too much, we're called what? A bitch. And if we get too emotional in ho at home with our family or at work, we're labeled as hysterical. And for the men in the room, you get it too. You can't get emotional at all, can you? You can't cry. Why? Because these things are signs of weakness. And you've got to toughen up for this world as a man. You've got to achieve a certain level of success and be a strong provider. So in all actuality, these gender boxes, they kind of beat us all up, right? You know, I was raised by a white southern mom and an Indian dad. If any of you really want to admit that you've watched Duck Dynasty before, I won't judge you, don't worry. That's basically my mom's side of the family. And in that context, I learned that being a woman meant I didn't take up too much space, wore a full face of makeup, had really big hair, and I spent all my time getting a man. Actually, if I had conformed rigidly to those gender roles, I wouldn't even be here speaking with you today. On the Indian side of my family, my Indian dad said, Annalise, he identified as a feminist, strangely enough, he said, Annalise, you can be and do whatever you want to as a woman. The sky's the limit. And then in the next breath, he told me he'd arrange a marriage with a nice Indian man for me. <laughs> what? Mixed messages around gender, right? It's all so confusing. Our brilliantly advanced civilization wants to label us as soon as we're born. We say, it's a boy or it's a girl. And that's where it all begins, right? From that moment on, we're taught to act and look in certain ways, and we're dressed in certain clothes. But how about the next time a beautiful, precious little one was born into your community of family and friends that you said instead, yay, it's a baby. And how about if we understand that all children and all gender play is good for them all? And how about if we understand that children try on gender identities just like we, I, we do, like costumes every day, right? And how about if we let our children show us who they are in terms of our gender instead of us telling them who we want them to be? You know, last December, a 17-year-old trans girl named Leela Alcorn, she committed suicide by walking out into oncoming traffic. She was hit and killed by a tractor trailer. Her suicide note read, my death needs to be counted in the number of transgender people that kill themselves this year. I want someone to look at that number and say, that's fucked up and fix it. Fix society, please. You know, it doesn't have to be this way. It really doesn't. We can all change the lives of trans people for the better just by changing how we think and feel about our own gender. And when we make those changes, they have ripple effects into our communities and our worlds. But most importantly, because each of us actually does transgress gender every day, when we make those changes in how we think and feel about our own gender, we become more loving and compassionate, not only to other people, but we become more compassionate and loving to ourselves. And we become more compassionate and loving to that little kid inside of all of us that got so beat up around gender growing up. A better world for trans people, it's a better world for all of us. So let's support the liberation of our trans brothers and sisters, not because they need us to be there, but because we need us to be there to liberate our own selves. Thank you. <laughs>